Hey, Lakeshore family. Um, it's good to be back on, the, on our video series. Pastor uh, Charlie and myself, Pastor Larry, it's been some time since we sat down and uh, did something like this, but uh, yeah. I'm excited to tackle some some sub, sub, subjects we'll be going through on the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, these uh, videos are used to help you grow in your faith mm -hmm. uh, and, and time to just encourage you, lift you up. And, uh, and in fact, tonight we'll be talking about growth spiritually. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we're going to just talk about our topic tonight. The topic is how can I grow my love for the church in a COVID-19 world? Uh, mm -hmm. What a, a great subject that we're going to be tackling tonight. So I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to that. Amen. Uh, speaking of growth, um, we'll be talking about this word growing in our faith, uh, particularly in uh, the love, our, growing in our love for uh, the church, mm -hmm. uh, specifically here at Lakeshore City Church. Uh, this word grow is a, a positive imperative. Mm -hmm. uh, imperative basically means command. It does, yeah. Um, so let me just go through a couple bullet points here. I'm talking just about mm -hmm. uh, growing in love. Yeah. Um, this is an opportunity for us to just focus and aim, uh, give us an aim during this time mm -hmm. in history based upon what's going on. Yeah. Um, Satan would love nothing more than for us to become um, apathetic during this time. True. Um, yeah. Critical. Yeah, that's um, a good one. Yeah. And rejecting a uh, rejecting of Christ's bride. Yes. Uh, we are commanded to be sober-minded and always on guard as believers. Exactly right. Um, also, another uh, imperative here: uh, pray that when you see problems in a church, mm. uh, not to criticize it mm. um, or reject it. Instead, put off that negative. Mm. And what are we supposed to do? Put on Christ and the way He cares for His church. Amen. So, Charlie, let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, I remember these these uh, topics are, are meant to equip the church, Amen. equip us as saints. Um, and I can't think of a, a better way to equip the church mm -hmm. than for our love to grow uh, for the local church. Let me just get right into the question. Uh, Pastor Charlie, mm -hmm. how can I grow my love uh, for the church mm -hmm. in a COVID-19 world? Mm -hmm. So Larry, I would say this way. Uh, Christ is our model mm -hmm. on how we are to care for his church. So. I would say this to, to those of you that are watching, that we need to imitate Christ. You know, what does God's word say? So we know that Christ faithfully prays for his church, his bride. Uh, we see that all over the place in God's word. But let me point all of us to a scripture right now, which would be Hebrews 7, uh, 25. It says this, uh, Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost, those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make, and here's the word, intercession, intercession for them. So Christ prays for the church, and we're to imitate Christ. What's he doing? He he's, he's lives to make intercession for them. So that would be one way that we can, our love for the church can grow uh, in a COVID-19 world, which would be to imitate Christ ultimately. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's actually great. I love the fact you're, you're drawing scripture out. I mean, Amen. we, we yeah. should be looking to scripture uh, for all things. But, you know, if we were to stop and pause and think about what you just said, uh, if church, uh, Christ faithfully uh, prayed for the church, mm -hmm. what should the believer be doing? Well, we should be praying. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and and right. particularly, we should be praying for the church. Amen. So if I had to pause just a second and just ask myself, even as a pastor, mm -hmm. and, and, and maybe you out there listening mm -hmm. and watching, how often do I or how often do you uh, pray for the local church, your church you attend? Amen. Um, and, and I think we don't pause enough to do that because I think we're so quick. We think of prayer, yes and amen, I do that. But how much time is spent our own intercession on self? Opposed yeah. to interceding for the church. Yeah, we have a, a, our propensity as a sinful people is to think about ourselves and think about things that we, we need to be thinking about. But we spend... The bulk of our time, I would say most people would spend the bulk of them, the, the bulk of their time thinking about themselves and not thinking about things such as the church. So if we're to imitate Christ, we're to imitate Christ by doing what? Interceding mm. on behalf of the, mm. of the church. Yeah, so it's important. That's a, that's a good word. Um, you know, just growing in our love for the church, it, interceding for the church. That's Amen. Good, yeah. So ultimately, we, we as a people are called uh, to pray. I mean, we can look at, uh, I'll take you to another verse, Acts 2, 42. Uh, listen to this again. Be thinking about we are called to pray. It says this, And they, the church, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and here we go, and the prayers. We're called to pray, and it says that, and the prayers. We, we, we can't miss that. Also, James 5, 16 says this, the prayer, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is 
working mm. as it is working. So we are called uh, to pray. We see that in scripture. Several more scriptures I'd like to share tonight. But those are a few things mm. to remind us as we imitate Christ. We imitate Christ by doing what he did and he called for his church. Mm. He prayed for his church. Mm. You know, let me go back to Acts 2.42. There's a key word. In fact, it's, we have it underlined here, um, this word devoted. Mm. Um, you know, we think of prayer. Yes, we should be praying. But this is a very powerful word because mm -hmm. uh, the church uh, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, says not only do they pray, but they devoted themselves to prayer. We think about mm -hmm. what does it mean to be devoted to something? You think of mm -hmm. an athlete, professional athlete, yes. devoted to his craft. What is he yeah. constantly doing? Training. Yeah, or devoted to a cause. Yes, yes. Or whatever the case mm -hmm. might be. That, mm -hmm. That's a key word. Yes. And I would say, you know, that's a challenge for us as believers. Yes. Yeah, you pray, yes, and amen, but are you devoted to prayer? That's a strong word. Yeah. And I wonder, like, if we think through this, um, you know, God can do more and in one minute of prayer than we could do in 50 years of laboring and mm -hmm. toiling and mm -hmm. doing things oftentimes uh, with our own with our own hands where God's nowhere involved in that yeah. right so mm -hmm. prayer is what prayer is what changes things prayer is what is what makes mountains quake prayer is is the remedy and Christ is saying do this cuz I do it you know so mm -hmm. but here's one too uh, first Timothy two, one through two, it says this, uh, first of all, uh, then I urge that supplications, here we go, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions that, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. So we see again, we're called to pray and we see this verse. What about Colossians 4, 2? It says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Again, we mm -hmm. see we're called to pray. Amen. Um, let me go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 mm -hmm. through 2. And, and yes, uh, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. But we're talking about growing our love for the church um, through prayer, even during COVID-19. Yes. And I think of this. Uh, we're to be praying for kings and all who are in high positions. There you go. There, there's no politics involved. It doesn't matter who's in office. Yeah. Whether we like them or not, we are still called uh, to pray for them. That's right. You know, no matter what you think of Trump, or, or I would even say at this point, Governor Newsom is causing a lot of problems in our lives. I would uh, being say the governor maybe a little bit more than Trump is right now. <laughs> Particularly in the church. <laughs> right, right. You know, I mean, he's... He's put a mandate that we can't even worship yes. uh, through song yeah. uh, in the church. Yes. Um, and and we, we, you know, we know that we will not obey that. But um, I think about that. How often mm. do I pray for you, Governor Newsom? Well, it's hard I to disagree. pray for people that you disagree, yeah. uh, you disagree with, yeah. right? Yeah. But if we look at the word, we're to pray, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so we're praying for all things. Think yeah. about it. We're praying for those things that... Maybe a good rule of thumb here is what are the things that are bugging us yeah. and who's bugging us? Yeah. And we are called to pray yeah. for the people, authorities that bug us. Mm, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's a good word. And that's, that is a good, good word. It's, it's a challenge to the church. You know, I can think of sometimes I, I see different political posts yeah. um, online, but I sometimes will take a step back and think like, you know, how often does, does this person who's posting this thing mm -hmm. actually pray for that person? Well, I think sometimes you could tell by the post, not very often. <laughs> so it's hard to pray for people that, sure. that drive you crazy. Sure. But, but the Lord says, pray. Yeah. Imitate me, pray. Yeah. And that's what we're called yeah. to do. Yeah. And what does the Bible say in talking about your enemies? What do you do for your enemies? You pray. Pray for your enemies. You pray. Hey, Christians uh, over the years have had a lot of enemies. Yeah. <laughs> but we pray. Yes. <laughs> so. That's good. That's good. Amen. Uh, great word, Charlie. Pastor Charlie. I mean, you know, we got the model of Christ to... to um, put in, in place what we should be doing as believers. And mm -hmm. I think you just hit the nail on the head talking about just following the example of Christ, um, praying for the church and for the church, but also modeling the church uh, of, of old in the book of Acts mm -hmm. um, to be devoted to prayer. Uh, let's, let's talk, maybe give me another way we, um, as believers, yes. uh, pastors included, members, uh, Christian obviously included, uh, how else can we grow in our love uh, for the church during this time, specifically COVID-19? Yeah, I mean, and again, we always want to find our answers uh, in Scripture, and we want to look at the model that Christ gives us. And we know that one of the modelings that Christ gives us, uh, one of the big ones, is Christ uh, sacrificially 
died for the church. I mean, he sacrificed himself mm. for us. Mm. And, and we as Christians uh, are to be sacrificial as well. The word of God says, uh, you know, to be like Christ, to imitate him. There's that word again, imitate him. Look at, look at this verse, Romans 5, 8. Again, Christians uh, need to be sacrificial. As Christ died for the church, we're to lay our lives down as well. So Romans 5, 8 says this, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So we need to be willing uh, to give ourselves sacrificially on its behalf, on the church's behalf. I mean, the, you know, the Lord loves the church. Mm. I mean, that's the bride of Christ. So we have to sacrificially give ourselves, not just to Christ, but also to the church and to each other. But the key word is sacrificially. Mm. And I think sometimes we do lose sight, um, mm. particularly in the church in America as a whole, mm. culturally I'm, I'm talking about, but we sometimes forget that word you had mentioned, um, the bride of Christ. Yes. Uh, Christ loves his church. He and does. we know according to scripture, the church is his bride. You think about that. And <laughs> you know? we don't sometimes, even in a, this culture, we think that just church is... A place we go to to get fed spiritually, yes, and amen to that. But mm -hmm. there is some sacrifice that takes place as we serve, and that's a good thing. Yes, because you're just not uh, serving an organization; mm -hmm. you are serving uh, the bride of Christ. Yeah, we we grow. Uh, everybody wants to grow. If if you're an athlete, you want to grow. You want to develop. Uh, in everything. We want to grow as Christians. You know, we want to grow as a parent. We want to grow, grow, grow. But that's, in, that's a good thing. It's a good yes. thing. But in order to grow, you have to sacrifice. You have to be disciplined. There's things that have to take place. So this is what's sweet here is we're not doing these things because that's what the world says. Mm -hmm. We are to be sacrificial because that's what God says. And, and, and God loves his church. So how do we grow? How does our love grow? Uh, you know, how do we grow in our love for the church in a COVID-19 world? Do what Christ does. Mm -hmm. Be sacrificial. Lay your life down. Be willing uh, to lay your life down, to be sacrificial on its behalf. And by doing that, you'd be honoring God. Uh, Charlie, Pastor Charlie, yes and amen to just living sacrificially. Um, but let's just talk from a practical standpoint. What does that really look like from a practical mm -hmm. standpoint? How can I be sacrificial or live sacrificially for the church? Well, there's a lot of ways we can do that. Uh, but I think a simple way to explain it would be think about how you steward or what you do with your time, mm -hmm. uh, your talent, and your treasure. So mm -hmm. time, talent, treasure. Let's start with that. You know, okay. how are you using that? That yeah. would be a good way to get us in the right direction. Yeah, no, I think that's good. I think, you know, from a time standpoint, using your time sacrificially for the church, I can mm -hmm. think uh, specifically right now, a, a couple comes to mind because okay. we've been hosting church um, at their house. There you go. Uh, what a lot of people don't know, uh, and that's the Johnson family, uh, Dane and Ch Tammy Johnson, I would say from a, t a time standpoint, there, there is some sacrifice there. Oh my you know, goodness, they, yes. they have three children, Yeah. right? Um, and they have to get up a little bit earlier, maybe mm -hmm. on a Sunday morning, uh, prepare yeah. everything for um, 9 a.m. for church to start. Mm -hmm. But when I get there, uh, Dane pretty much already has the tents up. Yes. And I, I think of a brother who, um, you know, he has to go to work at 12 o'clock. He does. And, um, you know, he easily can say like, hey, I work today. I, yes. I don't want to do anything or have no part of this. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I would think that, you know, the Johnson's family right now would be one of the families that I think of that mm -hmm. are sacrificing time because, um, you know, they do host the church. There's other things they could be doing, mm -hmm. but that would be a great example of, of what, um, sacrificially looks like sacrifice looks like yeah and then if we start looking at even things like talent you know we could you know this would be a good way where we could you know uh, talk about you know Joe and Candace you know they're they're talented they're gifted as musicians mm -hmm. and they're using that talent uh, to glorify Christ glorify his bride as they sing Christ-centered worship songs and invite the congregation to sing corporately so they're using gifts uh, for, for, for God's glory. We could even look at, you know, our treasure. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about this, you know, time, talent, treasure, financially. Um, you know, it's, you know, the, the Lord is saying, you know, take your treasure 
and 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 to and to be sacrificial in that. And think mm-hmm. about that word sacrificial. I mean, you know, as we talk about giving, uh, you know, oftentimes, you know, kind of a rule and thumb for giving in the Christian church would be, you know, you got to give 10%. And it's almost like you've got to give. It's like, that's not the heart of God. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, if we think about scripture, we read scripture, the Lord is saying sacrificially give. That every time we receive income, we, that we, we pray about it, but we sacrificially give. And it's not just to the church. You know, there could be uh, maybe a neighbor in need in addition to that. So we're mm-hmm. constantly looking for opportunities to be sacrificial. But we are talking about the church today. So mm-hmm. we're to be looking for needs. Let me give you one more, uh, Pastor Larry, that I think is helpful. And you and I have uh, bore witness to this. And that's when, you know, you know, in a community group, I can think of one community group that uh, at Lakeshore, uh, a discipleship group, where they had worked out that there was a need for uh, someone to have a vehicle uh, in our church. Mm. And this particular group uh, came together and they were able to purchase a car for somebody that was in need. And that's sacrificial. I mean, that's meeting a need and that's using your time, talent, and treasure uh, for, for Christ and his bride. Mm. Yeah. Well, those are good, the three T's, um, yeah. time, treasure, and talent. Yeah. yeah. And I would even say, um, you know, on that, that we have to be, people who play uh, play our part in the church. I mean, everybody has a role to mm-hmm. play in the church. And we, we have to remember that, like every person that, that, that comes into the Bride of Christ and the members of the church, we play a role. Listen to this verse in Ephesians 4, 16, familiar to you, Pastor Larry, maybe not to everybody here. Uh, From the whole body, joined and held together by every joint, talking about the church, with which it is equipped, it is equipped, the church is equipped when each part is working properly. Now, it's either working properly or it's not. When we're not using our time, talent, and treasure properly, the church isn't working properly. That's Mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, when each part is working properly, it makes, here's what it does, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Mm -hmm. That's a healthy church. <laughs> so. No, that's good. I love that that last uh, statement there in Ephesians four sixteen, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Amen. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah, that's what we're to do. So um, gifts, as we look at time, talent, and treasure, look at talent. You know, uh, those are given to us not for our own private benefit, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. for. Uh, for the sake uh, of of the entire bride mm-hmm. for for the, for the church, so yeah. we have to remember things that are given to us. We got to be good stewards with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think of these three things: time, treasure, and talent. Mm-hmm. And and who has all those things under his control? The Lord. The Lord. <laughs> yes. And he gives all three of those things yes. to us. And mm-hmm. yeah, that's 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 good. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Uh, Pastor Charlie, thank you so much for yeah. just uh, the time, just um, in, investing. Uh, not only in, in your talent that God has given you as a mm-hmm. pastor, um, but really pouring into um, our, our body here at Lakeshore City Church. Amen. Um, I've learned a couple things today. I was challenged by a couple things. Uh, but just to recap uh, mm-hmm. what we have learned about how can our love grow mm-hmm. for the church uh, in a COVID-19 world, we, we took away kind of two things today. Mm-hmm. Um, one of those would be faithful, uh, being faithful to pray for the church, mm-hmm. uh, being devoted to prayer. And the second one Amen. would be to uh, give yourselves sacrificially uh, to the church. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Lakeshore, hope you're blessed uh, by this time together. Again, this is hopefully benefiting you uh, to equip you and to grow in your grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Pastor Lee, thank you so much again. You're welcome, brother. Time tonight. God bless you. Thank you.